three, two, one. Dr. Payan. Thank you for watching, and today we'll do something very cool. Namely, I don't know if you took linear algebra, when, but when you learned about determinants, you usually think of it as some weird rule with pluses and minuses and bombermans and explosions. It turns out there's a very neat interpretation of determinants in terms of areas or volumes. Namely, suppose you have some object, some solid S, and you apply some very weird linear transformation on it. Think of a, you know, a linear hurricane that transforms this S into this wobbly thing, T of S. Again, it's a linear hurricane, so it might not look weird like that, you know, it might be look like a shear of S or some, you know, rotation of S. It turns out that there's a nice expression of the area of this new object in terms of the area of the old object, I guess volume, namely then the volume of the P of S is just the absolute value of the determinant of T times the volume of S. In other words, to get the volume of the new object, you take the volume of the old object and you just multiply it by the determinant of t with an absolute value. In other words, the determinant, what it is, is the measure of the change of volume of an object when you apply the linear transformation to it. And that's, if you want, the correct way of thinking of determinants. And to apply this formula, let me show you a cool application. Let me calculate the volume of an ellipsoid in a very quick way. So application calculate the volume of the ellipsoid in R3 x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared less than or equal to Okay, where again a, b, and c are positive numbers, and if you took multivariable calculus, you might, you know, have PTSD from that, because, you know, you have to use some weird integration techniques. Here, I will do it in a very, very easy way. Exactly like this, where, again, the x-intercept is a0,0, the y-intercept is b0, b0, and the z-intercept is 0, 0, c. Of course, with some, you know, uh, you know, the other intercept is 0, 0, minus c, etc., etc. And so, this is a very complicated object, and you're supposed to think about this as t of s, for some s. And so, the question is, how can we compare this very complicated object with something very easy? Well, notice, if you think about this, the ellipsoid is just a stretched out sphere. So, if you think of this as T of S, well, S should be the regular sphere of radius 1. S, and this is the point of 0, 1, 0, uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So the standard sphere sphere. So that S equals to sphere or radius 1. Radius 1. Then what's the volume of S? Well, it's just 4 thirds pi 1 cubed, which is 4 thirds pi. That's good. We found our, our you know, solid S. We found T of S. But of course, what about T? You know, what about us? Well, T, what properties does it have? It takes the point 1, 0, 0 and maps it to the point A, 0, 0. So T should be T of X, Y, Z. All it does, it takes the point X and dilates it by A. So AX, same with the point 0, 1, 0, 
you get dy and the point 0, 0, 1. You get CZ. So this is our linear transformation. The matrix of T of T is, if you calculate that, that's just A0, 0, 0, 0, B0, 0, 0, 0, C. So all you do is you see what happens to the point, uh, you know, uh, 1, 0, 0. So this gives you T of 1, 0, 0, T of 0, 0, 1, that is our 0, 1, 0, and T of 0, 0, 1. So we have this matrix, it's very nice, it's diagonal, so the determinant of T is just ABC, as easy as ABC. Good, so we have those two ingredients, we know the volume of S is 4 thirds pi, the determinant of T is ABC. Now, all we need to do is just multiply them together. You know, volume of ellipsoid, that's, you know, a volume of T of S, and that's determinant of T, so we mean absolute value, volume of S, and that's ABC 4 thirds pi. Uh, 4 thirds pi ABC. Ta da! So, again, a very easy way of calculating the volume of the ellipsoid without even having to you know, use integration at all. And one last thing, because someone asked, what about the Jacobian? Because, you know, why not? <laughs> okay. um, because notice, in, when you talk about the Jacobian, you also have this determinant, you know, uh, in, in the formula. And, you know, let me just quickly explain why you get this determinant. So, relationship with Jacobian. Because, what is a change of variable? Suppose you have, you know, x and y, and you have some integral with dx and dy. Okay. So maybe integral, blah, dx, dy. Well, you can think of it as a square with sides dx and dy, and the area is dx, dy. If you apply the Jacobian to it, or you know, maybe the matrix, if you want, uh, du over dx, du over dy, uh, dv over dx, dv over dy. You get another thing, okay? It's something like, you know, maybe a par parallelogram or something with sides du and dv. Alright, and then this area. It's just dx dy, and this area is du dv. Okay, but by the previous formula, we know that those two areas are related. So, by previous formula, we know that du dv, so new area, equals to absolute value of the determinant times the old area. So, what do we have? Just plugging this in. We have du dv equals to absolute value of the determinant of this matrix here times dx dy. But, this thing here is precisely called the Jacobian. So, absolute value of the Jacobian dx dy. And this is why precisely when you, you change, use a change of variables that the Jacobian appears. Because the Jacobian is just a measure of the change of area when you apply a change of variables. Alright, thank you so much for watching and hope you had fun. Ah, thank you. You're welcome.